Okay, tonight I'm going to show you guys a little bit of uh, how I do my crankcase uh, breather testing um, on particularly BMWs. The reason why I'm showing you on BMWs is because I have a true factory spec to go by. Um, and I've got two of them here, same exact engine. Um, so the same spec will follow. Uh, it's just going to be a quick... Um, quick tip type thing uh, and, and show you a good one and a bad one so to start off with I've got posted here for quick reference my engines and what the specs should be uh, and I've just converted the units to what I use to measure what I'm, my uh, scope unit is so Today's uh, uh, one we're doing is the N55, the spec somewhere around 1.48, so about 1.5-ish, and that's what I've got here. It's an N55, and in that X5 as well, um, 2012 uh, for this one, that one, it's labeled as a 13 over there, but... Uh, not sure if it's a 12 or not. Either way, same breather setup, uh, same engine. Like most BMWs now with plastic valve covers and so on, the, the valve and diaphragm, whatever, is built into the valve cover assembly. Uh, the whole breathing uh, is, is all one unit. Um, so in order for um, testing and, and all that, you want to make sure you are 100% sure that you're verifying that you have breathing issues because the complete valve cover to purchase one, the correct one, um, is not cheap. So that's that. So what I use um, is my Vantage Pro. It has the ability to set up in the graphing meter um, form to do um, vacuum in the low range. So right now in the open or steady state nothing running um, the starting point uh, and I've noticed this I don't know it's not always fully zero it's always zero five uh, inches but that I've come to know it being my starting point so we're at standstill no pressure no vacuum in the crankcase Go ahead and start it. Uh, that's what we're running at at idle. It'll stay steady around that range in the one five, which I'm, I'm comfortable with. It's not dead on to the spec. It's definitely close enough. Uh, and like I said, you gotta take into account your equipment and whatnot, but um, somewhere in that range, I'm good with and I'm comfortable. So. I'm going to shut it off. Actually, I had the AC running, but I was trying to do both without it. So, but nonetheless, so I'll pause it there. Get you into the full shot, the whole capture. So from beginning down there, that was when we were hooked up, connected. 
No engine running. You can clearly see now on this device when there's vacuum, it gets pulled upwards. Um, so engine started. There was vacuum uh, built up and held steady for the most part, obviously. And then you can see the point where I shut the engine off. It relieved that vacuum. So that is what that one looked like. We were floating around the um, correct spec uh, for the most part, something that I'm okay with on this. Now, that one, there's no complaints of any drivability. I just was curious because of the way it sounded. Sometimes you can depict some crankcase running issues by the way it sounds based on experience, but that one was good within spec, so no breathing issues there. Um, this guy, um, I will show you what this one looks like. So, get this one running. Back to our starting point. The next, all same way, same cap, same, same deal. I didn't know it was bad or had that much of vacuum in the crankcase. It's still pegged out at a spec. Now I can't remember. Oh, I think it's about 25 inches or so. I can't remember. Is what the max it'll read. And we're coming back down. And I don't know if you can hear, there's a hissing noise. That was my first uh, giveaway to do testing and compare the two because every time you shut the engine off you can hear hissing out of this and I'll show you where but okay so I've stopped the test or the capture and let me show you what that looks like from a complete form and that is totally way different so here was our starting point. Uh, cranked the engine over and big big increase in vacuum pegs it out it relieves some and then it starts to climb and it stays pegged the whole time I don't know how much it's actually pulling more than what it needs to be and then key off if it slowly starts to climb back down and that's the hissing that I keep hearing um, and I'll show you where it's coming from um, but that hissing is, I guess, vacuum being relieved, and it comes out of this portion there. Now, let me get you a shot of that. Uh, once I, I'll run it, turn it off, and let you hear that. Um, When the, the, the point that I was hearing it was when shutting the engine off. So let me so hopefully you can hear that. That was uh, uh, my first uh, signs of wanting to test the two of these since I actually had them both here at the same time. Um, this vehicle is definitely going to need a valve cover. Uh, I will let the customer know. You 
because it's an unexpected thing also for, for what it's here for. Your other quick crude way it's what I used to do for years um, you know uh, just pull open and pull your uh, oil cap and, uh, really really tough so yeah yes that is a good effective way for verifying um, where vacuum is being tied into your crankcase uh, by the way that the valve or diaphragm fails. Um, obviously, and you can see it here. There are the other ways where that fails, and you have also leaks, but where it's it's noticeable and measurable where it's leaking, say, externally and not uh, internally. So you have a vacuum leak that you won't hear uh, over at this point, but you'll see a loss of uh, vacuum because you won't reach that spec. So say it was 1.4, say 1.5. If you have, say, the oil cap off on a good diaphragm, and so you create a leak in the crankcase, it won't be able to reach that 1.5 and you'll have a lower reading. Then you know to go ahead and uh, look for a leak or smoke test it or whatnot. Um, or, if, you know, if you have your fuel trim codes, or any of that stuff. So it's just a lot of uh, ways that I try to go about for making sure of finding out which way it's leaking and what kind of leak you have. and and so on and so forth but just a quick tip bit whatever you want to call it of having two of the same exact engines with knowing an exact spec of that you should be looking for uh, and a way of measuring it and displaying that to you guys so hope that's helpful for some of you guys hope you uh Found it interesting and enjoyed it. And that's it for this one.